Yampa Valley is teeming with a variety of nesting birds every summer, and the broad-tailed hummingbird is one of the smallest nesters around. With a nest that has an outer diameter of about 2 inches, and that is brilliantly camouflaged with bits of lichen, bark fragments, and moss, it is nearly invisible. This allows her to raise her young mainly undisturbed. The cup-shaped nest of the broad-tailed hummingbird consists mainly of spiderwebs, which provides excellent insulation and anchors the nest to the branch. The female usually lays two plain white eggs, each smaller than a dime. This female is currently incubating. Her young will hatch sometime within the next two weeks. The blue-gray gnatcatcher is another small nesting bird of the Yampa Valley, very similar in size to the hummingbird. Their small cup-like nests are built from similar materials as the hummingbird nests, such as bark and spiderwebs, but are also woven with plant stems and grasses. The inside is lined with fine materials such as feathers, plant down, and hair. The male and female contribute equally to the nest building, incubating and raising of the young. This nest has four pale blue spotted eggs, just in the middle of the average range of three to five. Blue-gray gnatcatchers are nesting farther north each year due to rising average temperatures making them a more common sight throughout the valley. The American Robin is one of the most well-known birds in the U.S. They are commonly found nesting throughout urban and suburban areas along man-made structures such as roofs, porches, and light fixtures, as well as in forks of trees. Robins build their nests mainly from grasses and sticks. This robin chose to build its nest in the fork of a small tree. In order to build the nest, the female forms a cup out of dead grasses and twigs. She then reinforces the nest with soft mud and finally lines the inside with fine dry grass. This is a female Cordilleran flycatcher. Cordilleran flycatchers are quite small birds, just six inches long and weighing in at just under a half an ounce. This Cordilleran flew all the way from its wintering grounds in Mexico to build its nest under a bridge over a local creek. There are two other Cordilleran flycatcher nests next to this one. It is believed that this flycatcher has nested here for the past three years. Currently, there are three eggs incubating in the nest. In about two weeks, these eggs will hatch, and in an additional two weeks, they will be out of the nest and preparing for their flight south to Mexico. The house wren, from the genus Troglodytes, is a small brown bird common throughout much of the U.S. This is a male wren. The males migrate earlier than the females in order to establish territory and to build multiple cavity nests out of sticks. The female will then inspect a male's nest and choose the one she likes best. She will lay her eggs in only that one nest. Back to our hummingbird nest. The eggs have now hatched, and the chicks now require constant feeding, keeping their mother very busy. The chicks are fed on a diet of mainly nectar with a few small insects. The mother's day consists of getting the food, feeding the chicks, and keeping the chicks warm. The robin has chicks now, and the nest is starting to feel a little less comfortable as the chicks get bigger. Robins are born with their eyes closed and without any feathers. These chicks are now almost fully covered in feathers with their eyes wide open. The mom moves the chicks around and keeps the nest tidy throughout the nesting process. Back at the flycatcher nest, the chicks have hatched as well. Unfortunately, only two of the three eggs hatched. The other egg is not in the nest and nowhere to be found close by. It is likely that it was bumped out and swept away by the creek. The chicks are naked and can't see yet, so they rely solely on their sense of touch and hearing. Every time a car drives over the bridge, they open their mouths and beg for food. Most chicks have brightly colored inner mouths, such as the yellow mouths of these flycatchers, to tell their parents that they are ready to eat. All they do is open their mouths with their parents come to the nest, and the parents drop whatever they have caught, from moths to flies, into their mouths. These are barn swallow chicks. Barn swallows have rather large broods. Some nests can have up to seven eggs. After about three weeks from hatching, they are fully feathered and ready to fledge and leave the nest any day. The male house wren has finished construction of the nest, and a female has flown in to check it out. She wasn't impressed. Maybe one of his other nests will pass her test. The flycatcher young are now developing feathers and have open eyes. They, like the hummingbirds, require food constantly.
This is a spotted sandpiper, Colorado's most common shorebird. The spotted sandpiper lives throughout most of Colorado, from the low urban waterways up to the high mountain lakes. This particular family was above 10,000 feet. Spotted sandpiper chicks, unlike many birds, hatch with eyes open, down covering their bodies, and are quickly able to walk and eat on their own. This adaptation helps them survive because they are ground nesting birds and the chicks would be helpless against predators without it. These chicks are able to fly but still stay close to mom so that when danger is near she can lead it away while they hide and escape. The young have fledged from the robin nest but follow their parents around and beg for food. Here you can see one of the robin fledglings getting fed jelly by its parent. The other parent is likely back raising another brood. American robins nest two or three times in a single season. The hummingbird chicks have left the nest. Both chicks stay nearby. The mother returns and continues to feed them. This will go on for a few days before they must learn to find their own food. The swallow chicks have now left the nest and dispersed throughout the yard that the nest was in. The adult still feeds the fledglings, just less often because they are starting to catch their own food. This fledgling must also prepare for a long flight to Central or South America where it will winter.